Well, we're finally doing the In Beauty Project review today. We had some real bumps in the road in terms of getting this review done, reactions not to this brand, to other brands. But I think I'm finally ready to share my thoughts with you. It's a one to two month plus review going on here. Uh, I am sad that I'm a little late to uh, the In Beauty sale. In case you don't know, their website has a great sale every November and... Uh, <laughs> But you know what? I am in time for the Sephora 20% off for everyone. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put information for that in the description box below. See, this is why I'm saying the VIB sale is not the best. And what we're gonna do in today's video is a try-on of all of the products, that most of the products that I've been trying. I will have timestamps and links in the description box below if you are just interested in one specific product and we are reviewing eight face products, will seven. We've got the lip oils in here. Two body products, and I bought the majority of products for this video. I bought a couple of sets. This one right here in particular, the Healthy Skin Edit. This is a great value. It is a 40% savings. It's available on the Sephora website as well. That is a great set if you are interested in trying the brand. And then I received three products for testing. And before we get into the products themselves, let's talk a little bit about this brand. Per their website, they are a woman-founded brand who focuses on accessible price points. I really appreciate that. Now, they also have claims on stability. This is kind of interesting because they are a plastic brand. This seems to get into such convoluted territory. <laughs> I feel like some people are pro-glass all the way and other people are pro-plastic. I, I feel like, honestly, I sit in the middle. I thought I prefer glass packaging until I started traveling with it. And you know, it all goes out the window when you break glass in your luggage. Because glass is 100% recyclable unless you break it. Then you have to put it in the garbage, which is actually far worse for the planet than plastic. So I, I feel like glass and plastic have a place for me. But as for In Beauty's products, so you can see here, they actually have a fully recyclable pump. This is rare. This is really rare. Typically, you can't recycle the pump on your packaging. Even if you have a product in glass packaging, you can't recycle the pump but they figured out how to make that. They also say they fund the removal and recycling of two units of plastic for every item sold. I hope I'm understanding this correctly on their website, which I'll, I'll link it below if you want to read this. They say that a portion of the sales go to Carpe India, who is working on uh, better recycling involving plastic. And finally, they say their products are effective one would hope, and informative in that they give you some percentages of actives in their products. It's a little iffy though, they definitely do the complex from time to time, which as you all know, I, I now have a complex about the complexes because it's not full disclosure. We'll talk more about that through the video. I'm ready to get into this routine. It's a morning routine for me over here. And so we are going to start with the cleanser, the little sample, so I will travel sized cleanser that I got in the set. The full size of this is a pretty nice size, but I will say I don't particularly love this cleanser. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is pump out a tiny amount and do what I typically do with our K-Beauty cleansers. Let's see, this one is made in the USA, but it still kind of reminds me of a K-Beauty cleanser in that it just feels a little more stripping. I have the surfactants in dark blue for you, and the, the top surfactant used in this formula is a, a little bit more stripping. All right, so you can see it lathers up. It just feels a, a little bit too stripping, but again, that could be my skin type. I do have dry acne prone skin and a really bad cut on my hand at the moment. I'm gonna have to keep this band-aid on. I'm sorry it's ugly but it has to be there. So I'm gonna go rinse but before I do I just don't see myself buying the full size of this. We'll probably pass that one on and by the way it does have some essential oil ingredients. I guess they too went with the uh, essential oils are fine in a cleanser mentality and that's true for some people but it's never true for everyone. And we are back. I am going to use the acne serum next. I do have fully dry skin, no toner, so as to prevent any irritation. And I'm just gonna use a single pump of this product and spread it across my whole face because this does contain 
1.5% salicylic acid, which is a good effective level for acne, but it can be a little strong. It is an exfoliating ingredient and I do have a little bit more sensitive skin. I do have to say I like this overall. I still have a few breakouts trying to come in because <laughs> Not to be too much information, but it's the schedule for them. But as for this product, I really do think it's nice. They say the 1.5% salicylic acid right here, which is a requirement if you are going to call your product an acne product. Then you have to disclose what actives are you using for acne at what concentrations. And they do that, but they do have some other ingredients in here that can also help us. On their own website, they do disclose some of the percentages of ingredients, but they do it in kind of a bit of a funny way. So for example, with this product, they say it has 3% niacinamide and 2% tranexamic acid. But then when you see those plant compounds, that's when they're just telling us, 3% of thyme and oregano. And I don't know how much I agree with saying it's better than benzoyl peroxide. That feels a bit subjective to me. I don't really typically think of those as the primary ingredients I would turn to for acne, you know, as somebody with acne. <laughs> no, for me, benzoyl peroxide is one of my must-haves. I have a must-have acne products video if you would like to check that out. And benzoyl peroxide is on that while thyme and oregano are on my pizza. I always do think it's baffling when products like this have ingredients that I think kind of are exciting, the azelaic acid derivative, and then they're highlighting something else entirely. <laughs> but overall, I do like it. I think they got a lot right in this product in terms of having your 1.5% salicylic acid and then also having some of these calming ingredients such as panthenol, ceramide. So overall, I do like it. I just, I don't want to overpromise you. In a world that has a real tendency to overpromise products regarding acne, I don't want to do the same. And in all truth, it does not replace my retinoid nor my benzoyl peroxide wash. Sorry, sorry, time and oregano. You're, you're tasty. Let's talk about the other serum, the Green Machine Oil Jelly Serum. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be applying this today, nor can I really review this, because while I did try this, my skin didn't like it. This is not the color I remember seeing when I initially pumped this out. It wasn't originally yellow. This must be that oxidation I saw some reviewers talk about. Doesn't matter to me because I'm not gonna use this. This is stinging my hand. I don't know what I'm allergic to in this product, but there has to be something. You know, it's such a dangerous game for those of us that have sensitive skin where we try to figure out what's the one ingredient that is causing this burning sensation. But I'm also gonna tell you, as tempting as it is to play that game and I just tried to do it, it, it doesn't really help. It, it really doesn't. You know, if you are concerned that you have allergies, go get an allergy panel conducted. That will be the best way to really know. Apologies that I can't really review it, but it's just best for me to say I can't review it rather than to say it's a bad product because I reacted. Not everyone will. What I can tell you is per the website, it has 1% of a vitamin C derivative. It does also have some azelaic acid derivative as well, and uh, two essential oil ingredients, <laughs> thyme and oregano. But this time, the essential oils as opposed to with the extracts, and remember, essential oils are far more concentrated than an extract, and that's the exact same reason why the likelihood of irritation goes up, why some people can use extracts, but not essential oils. Let's move on to what I feel might have been the most surprising product to me, and that is the slushy. They call this a serum moisturizer all in one, which for me over here, as somebody with dry skin, I thought, <laughs> That's probably going to be neither for me. I like a heavier moisturizer. I use separate serums. What function could this possibly serve for me? And yet, I really like this product. <laughs> Indeed, it is not enough for me as a moisturizer, especially in the winter months. But there's something that is just so enjoyable about using this. It's a hard to describe texture because it's not a gel. It is more of a cream, but a very lightweight cream. 
And there's something just so enjoyable about applying this. If you do use a retinoid and you do the retinoid sandwich, which I do to this day with my Adapalene, this is such a nice product to use before your Adapal or whatever retinoid you use. And this actually has really interesting ingredients in it. Not only are you getting Bakuchiol and some other plant extracts for some antioxidant activity, making it great for day or, or night use, but you also have some fatty acids in this, which I think is why, in spite of its very light texture, this actually feels moisturizing. It's one of those products where I absolutely see why this is one of their best sellers. And by the way, if you are interested in this, the full size is in this kit for $6 more, which is exactly why even though Green Machine did not work out for me immediately, I am absolutely not returning the set. The next product that was also in the set, the 10 plus 10 moisturizer, moisture, moisturizer. I think I got it. <laughs> this is a vitamin C and peptide product. You are speaking my language. Those are some of my favorite ingredients. So let me try to show you the texture of this. You can see it really is a nice texture. It buffs in real nicely. A true cream, if you will, perfect for dry skin types, probably normal skin types as well. Not so sure on oily skin. But I have to say, this is where my complex is coming into play here because while it's called 10 plus 10, this isn't quite the disclosure that I love. We are we are talking about complexes. A 10% complex of two different forms of vitamin C derivatives. This has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid as well as THD ascorbate. And then it has a 10% peptide complex, which really tells you nothing at all. And in terms of other ingredients, you can see it is going to be a bit of a heftier product because it does have shea butter. It also has that lanolin alternative in it, which we typically see more in uh, lip care. But for my dry skin type, I love to to see that. So I have enjoyed this. In all truth, I don't think I'm going to buy it though. I don't think I'm going to buy a full size of this and I'll tell you why. It comes down to personal preference. For me, I like a vitamin C serum in the mornings and I like a peptide serum at night. So while I've enjoyed using this and will certainly finish it, it's just not a perfect fit for my routine. That said, again, you know, this could be perfect for people who don't want to juggle ingredients as much as I do in my routine. We all approach skincare differently and there is nothing wrong with that. Okay, confession, I just messed things up over here. I applied my sunscreen. This brand doesn't have a sunscreen, which is fine. Not every brand needs to, but I, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to apply this first. So we're just gonna pretend that I didn't have a bit of a brain fart over here. And we're just gonna pretend I'm applying this first. This is the Bright and Tight Eye Cream. Okay. I was really enjoying this initially, not as my only eye cream, but as an alternative eye cream for days where I felt like skipping concealer, just using a tiny little amount of this. Watch what it does. I'm applying just the tiniest amount of this under my eyes, and you're gonna see it actually does brighten up my skin. I'm actually blending it out with this little puff right here, just like I would a concealer. So I was loving this for days where I didn't feel like wearing makeup, just put a little bit of this under my eyes and it gives a cosmetic effect. However, in doing this trial, I tried to exclusively switch to this and I didn't love it every day. I feel like one of the problems with this is that it's not the most moisturizing eye cream I've ever tried. And since I do have dry skin, I kind of need to make sure that I'm using moisturizing eye creams. It also isn't great under makeup, it turns out. It's a great makeup alternative, but I don't like it under makeup. It just gets a little funny. It plays funny with some of my concealers. And finally, ever since my Ulta haul where I talked about buying the Live Tinted eye cream and it was a deeper tint than my under eye area is, that's where I learned that these brands that only have one tint in these eye creams, it's probably not enough. It's probably gonna be either too light or too deep for some people. So this one is light. 
And while it works for me, it probably would be a good idea for the In Beauty project to come out with a second shade, if not more shades. Yeah, it's really funny. It's another one of those products where I liked it until I forced myself to switch to it. This has happened. I do think that there are some products where it's really easy to appreciate it when it's not your only option on your counter. All that said, again, I do like it, just not every single day. It does have a beautiful ingredients list. They disclose that it has 3% tranexamic acid in it, in addition to three different forms of vitamin C derivatives. Bacuchiol, peptides, beautiful formula, just not one where I would recommend you make it your only eye cream. Now this is actually where I meant to apply my sunscreen and then use face glaze, because listen, this brand says that this is a moisturizer. It is a highlighter. This is absolutely a highlighter. I tried it as a moisturizer one day, and when I tell you how much I regret that choice, maybe it even makes sense. It's kind of hard to squeeze the product out of the tube. This is realistically how much you get because it's a highlighter. So we're applying this as a highlighter today, squeezing out about the same amount, and I'm just gonna apply it to my cheekbones. You also can mix this into a moisturizer, but honestly, I thought even that was a bit too much on me. Maybe better for people that don't need a lot of more hefty moisturizers. <laughs> See, look at that. That's really pretty. This brand is incredibly good at this uh, makeup skincare hybrid category. And as such, I love this, and I love the amount you get. You know, usually when you buy a highlighter, you get so little product. <laughs> 0.8 fluid ounces is a lot of highlighter. And they also came out with a bronzing product that I decided not to buy because as we know, I don't really like bronzer on myself, but it may be a good option. Leave a comment if any of you have tried that. Now as for the ingredients in this product, it has squalane, ceramides, hyaluronic acid. Kinda reads like a moisturizer, I just cannot use it in that way. For me it's a highlighter. I do think it's so funny that the ingredients list contains vanilla extract. Listen, y'all could have put that under the word fragrance if you so wanted to. But vanilla extract is funny because you could also list it out into your product and now you have a quote unquote fragrance free product. I think I quote unquoted my quote unquote and then left fragrance. Stop overthinking things, Alice. This is exactly why I keep saying the fragrance debate is so hard to talk about. It's so hard to talk about because it's not as simple as looking to avoid the word fragrance. You've got ingredients like vanilla that, who isn't thinking of vanilla as a fragrance ingredient? The bottom line here being, this is a fragrance-free product that smells good because it smells like vanilla. We have one more product in the makeup skincare hybrid category, and that is, of course, of course, their lip oils. These are very popular, and I think it's because they did something very similar to what Summer Fridays did. They have different flavors, different colors, and they all smell a bit different. I feel like that just kind of keeps things fun, right? So I'm going to apply the candy apple one. Woo. I do like the applicator. It's a big, thick applicator. And I bought the Get Glazed Duo, which by the way, great value, $25 for two, and these are $17 each. I saw that new Poppy set uh, on the Sephora website. Why is that $34? Why is there no discount? <laughs> I do like these. I like the feel of them. It feels more moisturizing than most lip glosses. I like the color of especially Candy Apple. I did see some people on Reddit saying they don't like the stickiness of these. This is not sticky to me. This is heavy, but not sticky. Sticky to me is where you can do that and you see the string of lip gloss. This is just heavy. And so I can see how it wouldn't be for everyone, but if you like more moisturizing lip products, I, I do think you will like this. We have two body products that I wanna talk about. First up, the Body Bright and Smooth 7% AHA and BHA Body Serum. You know how this brand said that they have accessible price points? This is a really good example of that because this is a strong body product where you get five fluid ounces for $34. It's a great value. Now they are doing a bit of that thing where they don't quite disclose the percentages, 7% AHA and BHA. Well, how much of each? 5% tranexamic acid, vitamin C, and kojic acid. Okay, but how much of each? 
still love that with some niacinamide, your enzyme ingredient. You're getting a lot of exfoliation in this. So again, it's a strong product, but I do think it's effective. I'll pump some of this out so you can see it is a faint yellow product, blends into your skin nicely, almost has a little bit more of a moisturizing feel to it as well. It's a really nice body serum. They also did send me the Bronze Body Glow, and it's funny, we've already talked in this very video about how I'm not really a bronzer person. So this is a product where I probably wouldn't have bought it. Even though I do like body oil, I probably wouldn't have bought this, so take that with a grain of salt. Because ultimately, I don't think it's a product for me, it's a bit too much. <laughs> My main problem with this, aside from it being the wrong time of year to test this product, I think, my, my biggest problem is I didn't feel it's as transfer resistant as they claim. You'll have to look past my band-aid here, but you can see the difference. I mean, I guess it is bronzing, it's just not drying down either. <laughs> but again, it's, it's a product that's not for me. It may be for some people. Again, leave a comment if you have tried this. Are we out of time? No, this brand has plenty of it. So let's go ahead and wrap up today's video with some final thoughts. I'm glad I did this trial because I've been curious about this brand for such a long time, but in the end, in my head, this is a brand that is for those who are looking for skincare and makeup hybrids. I very much see the appeal in the face glaze as well as in the lip oil. I like the eye cream, just not as my only eye cream. And admittedly, the biggest surprise to me is slushy. I absolutely love slushy. I also do like the acne serum. I think it is a well-designed product. And of course, I like the body serum. I think this is a very well done serum. What I didn't like, again, for me, it was the Green Machine line. Maybe because of the essential oils, maybe because it's designed more for oily skin. I'm not sure. Wasn't for me. I am so sorry this video took me so long to do, but I hope that in the end it was helpful. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you all next time.